what is it? It says that if what in a sedimentary environment, for example, our I start drawing again our meandering river system where you have the plain, the channel. So here is the river flowing. The point bar. And then the alluvial plain again. Remember what I said, this migrates. And this also migrates. So all the system is migrating. So when the system migrates, logically, this point bar overlaps or goes over a channel. The channel will erode and will cut through the shield that was deposited before. So there you will find, are bound to find what? On top of some shield, you will find the course of the course lag of the channel. And on top of the course lag of a channel, you will find the sand of the point bar. And on top of the sand of the point bar, the system of the alluvial plain silt will migrate. So what does this mean? If you, for example, find in an outcrop only a slice of it, like a tiny little bit like this, because this is the only thing you can find. Or you have a core, and in your core it's very tiny, and from the core you have to try and understand what the fluvial system was. Well, you have to look at the rocks, at, at the sedimentary structure, and those are fascias. And also at the association of fascias, because this is one fascias, the point bar which will consist mostly of large cross-bedded sand or uh, uh, sand organizing large cross beds. This is another fascias, which will be mostly consisting of silt with a little bit of sand. And this is again another fascias, because it will have a bit, a um, little unconformity, which is the channel, and channel legs, so mostly like fine conglomerate and sand. So each of these fascia, sorry here, it, you can call it a sub-environment because it's part of the larger environment which is a meandering river system, fluvial environment. Now let's go back to this. What you find, what you are required commonly to do in the field is to look at a cross-section. And it will be a stratigraphic section, actually. You draw a stratigraphic section. So you report, report what you observe from bottom to top of the section. 
because this dimension is called time. So from bottom to top, you go from older to young. If young, if everything is okay, meaning you probably know from your geology that just that you can have uh, entire, you know, you have faults. So maybe something that used to be like this, and this was old to young, is reversed and become the opposite. So you always have to, you use actually the um, sedimentary structure to look for younging. What are we, what can we find at the bottom? Well, suppose that at the bottom of what outcrops in your section, you have silt. And then you find something like this, and a, a little erosional surface. with a little bit of conglomerate, right, okay, and I always have to check. And then you have sand, and the sand looks as if it's organized in large cross beds, okay, and maybe you find another one. And, yeah, you might find another one. Okay. Now, you might then find on top of this, so these are large cross bed. in sand, but here you have fine. So that rather than cross bed, you have cross lamina in finer sand than this one. So cross lamina and the grain size has diminished. So coarser sand, finer sand. And maybe you find oh, there is another one. Okay. And then on top of this, you have silt. Maybe with a little tiny, tiny bit of sand, with a little bit of cross lamina, tiny away. And then silt. And everything is capped by mud and you might even find evidence of fleas. So we go from conglomerate to mud. This succession or sequence is called fining upward. What does it mean? So that the, through time, the grain size decreases. So you have something like that, and try to remember what I told you here. This is an erosional feature. And on top of this erosional feature, you have conglomerate. And on top of the conglomerate, you have sand in large cross beds. And on top of this, you have finer sand with ripples, and here they are. And then you have silt, and at the top of this, you have trees and mud. 
So that's exactly telling you that there was the migration, lateral migration, of these sub-environments, fascias, through time. And now what you find is sub-environments which were laterally adjacent at a certain time, with passing time because of this migration, now they are one on top of each other. So a meandering river, a typical stratigraphy or stratigraphic sequence of a meandering river will be like this. So each of these fascias, the conglomerate with uh, erosional, uh, erosional bays, the cross bedded, large cross bedded coarse sand, the fine cross bedded, uh, cross laminated sand, maybe a little bit of parallel lamination in silt and the mud with fossil trees or stumps or sharp, oh, sorry, or coal even. This finding upper sequence is representative of a meandering river system that has migrated. Now, you could ask me, and what are we going to find in a braided river system? A braided river system is a lot more, first of all, it will have a lot more course. It will have many of these erosional surfaces. It will have conglomerate. So each of these conglomerate will mark uh, a channel and then the point bars will look like this. And most of the time, and it will have some conglomerate also. If the system evolves towards less energy, it is also possible that we find the sand and a little bit of silt. But in a meandering river system, there will be a lot more sand, and we will have, uh, sorry, in a, in a braided river system, and we will have a lot more of these uh, cross laminated coarse sand and a little bit of conglomerate. So somehow once you, and this is again because what is that is migrating? If this is the channel, it will be the bar that migrates on the channel. But the channel has its the channel is is determined by its erosional surface. And again, here you have the coarser, and then here it's also coarser if it's a gravelly bar or but it will it will have a lot more sand. So the bar migrates on top of the channel, and maybe if there was a little bit of alluvial plain, this would go on top of the bar. In time, this system migrate, and so that's the reason why you find stacked on top of each other the different sub, sub environments that when fossilized, become your fascias. 
So Walter's law explain what we find in the in the stratigraphic record.